Welcome one and all to the Storytime channel. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and today we have some malicious compliance stories. Our first story of the day is by Waterboarded Apples. Want the whole bottle? You'll get the whole bottle. So this story was from about 8 years ago so my memory may be a little hazy. So I was 18, male, and working a bar in this town center somewhere in the UK. We're based between two of the grimiest pubs and the clubs in there, so we got a lot of dodgy, rude, and drunk patrons on a regular occurrence. One night at around 12am, this group of guys comes in wearing suits and I immediately can tell they're pretty drunk and obnoxious. They come to the bar, which was about 2-3 to three deep, around 20-30 to 30 people waiting ahead of them. They start loudly asking for service, even though there's people patiently waiting in front of them. Me and my team just roll our eyes and get back to serving people. I get around to serving them and they all shout, Finally, some freaking service, what took you so long? I just ignored that comment and asked what they wanted. Then they started talking amongst themselves, like they didn't have enough time to work this out while waiting. The ringleader proclaimed that they're going big tonight, so they want a bottle of Grey Goose Vodka. I said, I can only see you a maximum of a double in any one drink. If you want to make it stronger, go for it. He ignores the most of what I said and just says, Didn't you hear me? One bottle of Grey Goose. We can't sell the bottles of spirits under any circumstances. I call the manager up in the back and explain the situation. He says exactly what I've already told the customer, so we agree that if explained one more time about how I had to give them the drink and he just said one bottle again, I'd do it. What ringleader didn't realize is that I have to put the whole bottle through as doubles, which was about $8.50 per double without any mixers. So this bottle ended up costing him 170 quid before any mixers when it's only 35 quid in the local supermarket. He throws his hands up in the air saying I've ripped him off and he's not going to pay that. Why didn't I say anything sooner, etc, etc. I said that I did and he just fobs me off and goes to walk out. Little does he know I've already asked the bouncers to keep him in the building till he's paid up. His mates laugh at him as he goes white as a sheet, realizing he's just spent a lot of money. His friends give him a little bit of money to help pay up. Ringleader then spends the night sulking with his 170 quid bottle of 30 quid vodka. Have you guys ever made a regretful purchase in a bar or club type scenario? Let me know in the comments down below. And our next story is by LG888, The Referee's Compliance. Okay, one more paintball malicious compliance that I watched a referee take part in. Quick info in paintball, if you call for a paint check on yourself, you can't keep playing, in case you had been hit, until the referee calls you clean, and if the referee calls a paint check on you, nobody can shoot at you or move up on you. Back in my tournament days, there was this one team that had a bit of a reputation for if not breaking the rules, then bending them beyond recognition. Their captain, who we will call Stompin' Tom, was a little intense. He also had a tendency to use the paint check rule to stall a game. Nobody moves up while his team could regroup. So our team of five was up against their team of five, and to be honest, their team was the favorite. They were serious while we played for fun. The game starts off fine and we get a lucky break and we take out one of their guys early. This rattles Stompin' Tom as he expected a cakewalk. I was the one shooting at him and I know I am not even close when he calls a paint check. Just as the referee starts to go over and check him, I hear our captain yell our team name. Yeehaw! Now for this tournament, we had practiced a crazy new tactic. If anyone on our team at any time yells our team name, we all just get up and run directly at the enemy. I told you we played for fun. So we do. I get up and run right past Stomp and Tom. I don't have to worry about him as he's called for the check and can't shoot me, so I shoot the guy behind him who has no idea why five guys are running towards him screaming. I hear Stomp and Tom sputtering behind me yelling how this isn't fair as my teammate grabbed the flag. We had now shot all of his team and he wanted to have them all back and us moved back to before he called for the check. The referee laughed and reminded Stompin' Tom that he had called the check, not the referee, but that since he was clean, he could play on now. Stompin' Tom looked at all five of us all around him and, well, stomped off. We got the points for him as well. Stompin' Tom's tactics got stomped into the dirt. 
it must have felt so good to just totally dismantle this guy's foolproof tactics. See you later, Stompin' Tom. Our next story is by True Norse 98 my very annoying alarm clock habits. First off, this story is now almost four years old. When I first joined the military, I had a roommate, who we will call Rodney for this story. Rodney was the definition of Jesus freak, and normally I avoid religious topics, but Rodney would sit and lecture me every single night about how I would discover the error in my ways and so on, often until late at night. In the mornings, I was required to be up at 5 a.m. while he would sleep until 8 or 9 and every morning, he complained bitterly that my alarm would wake him up and I dealt with the situation nightly for two or three months until he finally demanded that I wake up with a different alarm sound so he could sleep in. Worth noting that mine was a standard alarm sound and not something crazy. At this point, I flat out hate the guy and so I did change my alarm but he had never specified what he wanted to hear every morning, so I decided to pick one of my favorite songs. A soothing little number called Disciple by a band you may have heard of, Slayer. Every day for a month, my roommate and I would be the victims of a mini heart attack when Tom Araya would be screaming through my phone. Eventually, because of complaints on both sides, the situation had eased and shortly after, I ended up with new roommates. But I'll never forget the warm feeling I would get when he would be weeping into his pillow at the bitter hell his tender ears endured at my hand. I think it's completely fine and normal for people to want to spread their religion, or share their religion and why they like it. But at the same time, you need to be able to read the room and realize if somebody is not interested, pounding it into their ears is not going to make them want it even more, or change their mind. If they don't want it, pray for them, hope for them, but don't shove stuff down people's throats, nobody likes that. This next story is by ALH Bundy. First Boss Weasel Incident I recently posted about my ex-boss, so I thought I'd post one that wasn't as bad as losing my job, but entertaining to me. As previously stated, I worked as a mainframe computer operator in the 80s to 90s and worked nights. As lead, part of my job was maintaining the schedule and contacting the appropriate people if a job didn't end properly. Well, one fine night at around 3.30 a.m., a key job ended and the next job did not start up. I didn't realize this right away because an error message did not highlight on the monitor. I scrolled up the screen, found an error message, logged it in the book and called the appropriate contact. That of course was just thrilled to hear from me. When the daily log printed out, I highlighted the job and pointed out the error code, and then wrote it in the turnover book for the day shift. When I came in the next night, the second shift lead informed me that Boss Weasel wants us to stay until 10am to find out why I called the contact for no reason. At the time, I didn't know how much of a weasel he was, but no one trusted him. I told the guys I worked with that I would handle it and just don't say anything because I was going to have some fun. They agreed because they knew what happened and that Boss Weasel was just trying to look important. So our shift ended at 7.30 and we went to the cafeteria and hung out until meeting time. We walk in and there is Boss Weasel in his full weaselness, his boss Cool Boss, and some other tech people with ticked off faces. Boss Weasel then went on about how there was no error, I screwed up, there would be penalties for it, etc, etc, etc. I replied that there was an error code and I looked at Cool Boss and reminded him of policy to alert the contact if any error happened and the next job did not automatically start. He said that was correct. I asked Boss Weasel for a printout of all screen messages and made a big show of not being able to find it. I then said that I had to get something from the computer room and went to get it so I could control my laughter. I got the logbook and turnover book opened it to that date's page, reopened the printout to the exact time with all highlights and said, here it is boss weasel. His fur dropped as he realized that our butts were covered in silk and he was about to get his kicked. Cool boss was pissed. He looked at boss weasel and asked him, did you look at the logbook, turnover log or the printout with the pretty lime green highlighter? Uh. Cool boss said we could go and he would handle it. As we left, we heard about 10 people screaming at the weaselly one, and we all started laughing. A fun day was had by almost all. 
Hey, at least OP got paid overtime for having to stick around and embarrass Weasel Boss like that. Honestly, it sounded like it was a fun little experience and you got some bonus overtime, great story, and you got paid for it. Our next story is by Board and Beard, stay in the back and handle order packing. Ah, the jobs full of silly bosses. I worked at a place that sold home automation slash electronics before Alexa and Google Home were the easiest ways to do things. We had lost our guy who generally packed up the orders slash kept the inventory tidy. Due to things I did wrong that nobody thought to tell me about, I was politely demoted from front office slash sales to the now vacant role. In order to explain this to me, my manager went on vacation, let the CEO's daughter slash COO come to town to cover for him, and left her to explain it to me. Her method was by bringing in a new guy, telling me to go in the back and handle the order packing. No conversation, no explanation of what I'd done wrong, or anything. Just suddenly there's a new dude and I'm to pack orders. Phone rang and I answered it, as I had for 18 months. Nope, get back to packing orders. Customer came in who I knew their order? Nope, get back to packing orders. So that's what I did. Phone rang, I ignored it. People came in, I ignored them. Delivery came? Well, it wasn't part of packing orders. Time to sweep up the warehouse? Sorry, packing orders. They wanted to go to lunch and have me watch the door? Sorry, I'm packing orders. I'll happily lock the front door. This lasted a few hours before she decided to get demeaning, explained my job was packing orders and only allowed to do other things at her discretion. I asked politely if I could tell her to F off. When she didn't respond right away, I did and walked right out the door. Obviously, management didn't give much of a crap. Because they moved you directly to only packing orders simply because you made a mistake because nobody explained to you what you had to do, they wanted you to stay at that lowly position doing that stuff and then continue doing everything your job was already doing anyways. I would have wanted to walk out too. Forget that. You're only to pack orders and also if I tell you to do anything else, that's also what you do in your job. Now, that's what your job is. It's like, excuse me? See you later. And our final story of the day is by Laurel Laureate. Speak language, this is country. My friend who is Vietnamese gets told, speak English, you're in America, all the darn time. It got quite annoying to him, so he eventually decided to do something about it. He looked up the Native American tribe whose tribe was originally on the land where he lives went to the tribe's cultural center, told the elderly grandma working there he was tired of being told to speak English in America, and had her teach him how to say white person slash outsider slash non-native in the language, as well as some other curse words and whatnot. Apparently this made that Native American granny's weak, because she went all out and really taught him quite a lot. And ever since, anytime some racist tells him to speak English in America, he says, well, why don't you speak Native American tribes language? We're in Native American tribes lands, you darn Native American word for white person. The shocked Pikachu.jpg face he gets in response never gets old. They completely freeze up for a few seconds before responding in entertaining ways such as gasping for air, or pointing their finger angrily or just turning and walking away. Eventually, the word spread amongst my group of friends and quite a few of them, who as immigrants, or even just people who speak a second language, occasionally also get told this, are always chomping at the bit to get their chance to use this response. Every time some of them finally does, they immediately announce it to everyone they know, and it never really gets old. Anyway, I didn't really know where to post this but felt it matched here well enough. Hopefully, as it takes the racist's logic and returns it right back at them in a way that really rustles their jimmies. What ways have any of y'all flipped the script on people like this? There's a lot of people in the comments here posting stories similar to OP's and it's really cool to hear all these cool creative ways to deal with these repugnant people. I also think it was just a great experience for OP to be able to go to this Native American tribe and see what they're still doing, learn a bit about it, learn a bit about their language and their lands. Overall, this is a really cool and creative way to deal with these disgusting people. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So which of these stories was your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and turn notifications on if you haven't so you'll never miss an upcoming video. Any little thing that you do helps the channel grow so much more. Whether it's commenting, subscribing, or just watching the video, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time, right here on the Storytime channel.